In today's tutorial, we're going to learn about real-time clock or RTC for short. RTCs are a really useful device to keep track of time. Like in this example, this is my RTC. It's based on the DS1307. And as you can see, I can show the time and date here. One of the great things about RTC is that if I disconnect it from the electricity, as you can see, I switch it off. I switch it back again and the time is kept. Great! Let's talk about how they work and how we can use them. If you find this video useful, please share and like it and subscribe to my channel. So how do RTCs work? In this setup you can see this is a store-bought one. I ordered it online. And on the right hand side here you can see uh, a homebrewed one. This homebrewed one is only built from the following five items. The DS1307, which is the RTC IC, that allows you to keep track of time using a crystal oscillator here. And you got two 1K resistors. This is for the I2C communication. Uh, this is what allows us to communicate with, with that chip and get the information out of it with a certain protocol. And of course, a battery holder, so when you disconnect the main system from the electricity, that IC still gets electricity and keeps tracks of the time. So now let's go see some code. Before we dive into the code, I want to talk about the types of RTCs out there. If you go to eBay or AliExpress, whatever you prefer, and you look for RTCs that are I2C, you're going to find two major types. The ones that are based on the DS1307, like this other fruit one, or the ones that are based on the DS3231, like this other fruit one. The major difference between the two of them is the accuracy, the precision. And you can see it's called Precision I2C RTC, and it is. The DS3231 is way more accurate than the DS1307. And the reason for that is the uh, crystal oscillator in the DS3231 is a part of the chip while in the DS1307 is an external one. Um, they're saying that the DS1307 is going to have a drift at about a minute a month. So if you don't care about a minute a month, you're fine. But if you want something that is really precise, you want to go with the DS3231. Um, also, you can find different models, like the one I showed you next to my homebrewed one. This is one based on the DS1307 as well, but it's got uh, some other sensors on it. I think temperature, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, it's really important to know what is the, on what your RTC is based on when it comes to choosing the right library for it. Last thing I want to cover before we dive into the code is the pinout. Um, each RTC, the 1307, is going to have five pins. It's going to have grounded 5 volt for power. It's going to have SDA and SCL for the I2C. On a UNO, the SDA will go to analog 4. The SCL will go to analog 5. Those are the I2C pinout on the UNO. The last pin, the fifth one, is SQW, that's short for a square wave, which means a wave that goes absolutely zero for X amount of time, then absolute top uh, voltage, which in this case is 5 volt, and so on. And it can be set to work in either 1, 8, 4, and 32 kilohertz. We'll go over the code and I'll show you. A uh, really good use for that will be to use this if you put your uh, microcontrol to sleep, you can have this waking it up. Let's say if you're using one kilohertz, that will be every one second, it will turn it off, do something, and then go back to sleep. Let's go see the code. In order to make our life easier working with the RTC, we will download a library. Uh, the library will do the hard lifting for us, we'll do the I2C communication, the translation of the protocol, and so on. Uh, a few words about libraries and their location. Me personally prefer to put my uh, libraries wherever my sketchbook location is. So if you go to file preferences, this is a sketchbook location. And you can see it here. This is my sketchbook location. And there is a libraries folder inside of it. So now let's go and find the library. Uh, if you Google search this Adafruit RTC Lib, you will get to this page. Um, 
this library was forked out of this library and they made a few changes and I personally prefer them. One of the things that they have the other library doesn't have is the option to read the setting of the square wave and so on. So we'll click here and download the zip file. We can see it's here and I'll just copy it and put it in my uh, libraries. There you go. Now, if I go back to the uh, if I go back to the IDE, and I go to sketch, and then I'll do include library. You can see the RTC lib is not here, uh, and you won't even find it if I go to file examples. And again, the RTC library is not here. The reason is that the IDE is reading the libraries before it's set up, so we need to close it and then reopen it, and we'll have the library. And then we'll open it again and then now if we'll go to sketch and we're doing sorry include libraries you can see the RTC library is here and we can also go to file example sorry examples and then you can see RTC library is here and you can see there's a few options as I mentioned before this is for the DS1307 and you can see this library will work for the DS3231 but you gotta choose the right example. Okay, uh, I pre-made an example and I'll take that and we'll work from there. So I took the basic example of DS1307 from the library and let's go over the code a little bit. First we include two libraries, the wire which is uh, the i square c library and then the RTC library which is the one we downloaded before. Then we define an RTC object of type RTC DS1307, which means we're using the class of 1307s. I showed you before, uh, the same library has few classes in it uh, to enable using other, uh, other RTCs, for the example, the 3231. Uh, next line here is an array of days of the week, and I'll show you in a second how it's been used. I've counted out this line because it's for Lonado and stuff, so we don't really need it. And one change that I've made is I've changed the uh, baud rate to 115, 200, which is the baud rate I like working in. So this is the first function they're using out of the RTC object, which is begin. And note the not, which means if the RTC doesn't begin, if the I square C doesn't find the model and cannot communicate with it, it will just say could not find the RTC and loop forever. Uh, stacking your program from going on. If you run into this, you probably didn't wire it correctly. Check the uh, C, uh, the CS the SCL and the SDA lines that are going in the right places. Next function is the RTC is running. I've I've looked into the library and what it does it makes a communication to the model itself and waiting for a response. And if it doesn't happen, it shows you RTC is not running. We'll go over it in a second. And there's a lot of lines here comment out. I'll get back to this, which is the important one, but let's go back to that and let's uh, in a second and let's go further on what's here. Then we're defining a variable called now of type daytime. And we're fetching the now out of the RTC object. And now we can print out, uh, this is basically just bringing whatever the date is stored right now on the RTC and it sets it into the now variable. Uh, and then we can print now year, month, day. Uh, and remember that array, the day of the week. So uh, now we also have an index for day of the week. Uh, index starts from zero through six. So zero will be uh, uh, Sunday and so on. So if the index here will come back as a one, what we're gonna get is out of this array will be Monday. Uh, next we got hour, minute, and second. Uh, also, we got Unix time. For you who doesn't know what Unix time, Unix time is the seconds since midnight, the 1st of January, 1970. And then they're using the same thing by dividing it by 86,400, which is the amount of seconds per day, and then they can print out days. Another interesting feature that we have here is we're defining another variable called future of type day time. And we're taking now and adding a time span. The time span, the time span is built from days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Basically, we're adding seven days, 12 hours, 
30 minutes and six, sec and six seconds to the current time. And then they're just outputting the same thing. And you can see instead of outputting the now, they're outputting the future. So let's upload this code and open the serial port and see how it looks. Sorry. And here it is. Uh, notice the RTC is not running. I'll get back to that in a second and I'll explain that. And as you can see, the RTC is working and it's even showing the correct uh, date and time. It is the correct date and time. And you can see here, remember we talked about the future. You can see now plus seven days and 30 seconds. It's basically now that they're having uh, 12 hours as well. You can see it moved. Uh, you can see if you do the math, you see the math is correctly and they are delaying um, every three seconds and they are fetching it again and printing it out. Uh, let's go back to, uh, to this, the is, uh, the is running. For some other reason, my home brewed one, it doesn't work well with this function. I did a little bit of uh, research on Google and it's either it's not getting uh, uh, power correctly, which I don't think so, or it has to do with the uh, crystal itself. In any case, um, I have checked the other bot one and it's working well on it, but I don't want to use it. But what I do care about is this. And now I want to show you something. I'm going to take the battery out of the, out of the model for a second. So I pulled out the battery and uh, disconnected the Arduino, which basically clears out the, the, the settings of the RTC. So it doesn't know what the time again. And as you can see, it doesn't even advance anymore. You can see it still stays on zero here. And it will do that until we actually adjust it. So let's see how we, how we adjust the time. So let's go back to the code. As you can see here, this line, this is the most important line. The command is adjust and it asks for date and time and it gives you the date and time. So what are those variables? Those variables are the date and the time this has a, a code was compiled. Uh, it's an easy way to upload the data, to set the data uh, once you upload. So basically if we'll keep it this way and I will upload the code and open the serial monitor again, you see RTC is not running and it adjusted the time and it's back to its normal time, which is great. You can also, if you like, you can also adjust it to any other date in this format when it comes to you having the year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, which is, you know, if you're adjusting it through an output or whatever, that will be an easy way to adjust it. Great, so we covered uh, those most important things. And let's see, now let's see what we can actually do with it. So this is the code that was on the Arduino when we started this tutorial. I'm not going to get into the liquid crystal here and here because it's not what the tutorial is about. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can always go to the, uh, the Arduino website and you'll get excellent guides there for this. So let's go back to the code. So again, I'm including the two libraries. I'm defining the RTC and I'm defining here a global variable of type daytime called star daytime. And I'll show you in a second what I'm doing with it. Um, in the setup, I'm starting the serial, um, starting the wire, the RTC, setting up the LCD. And here is the use of that variable. What I do is at the end of the setup, I'm saving the start daytime and, and I'm fetching the now from the RTC. Meaning that at the end of the setup, I will have stored in here what was the date and time and that current second. Um, and then looping, same as the other, I'm, I'm fetching the time every time into this variable and I'm just printing it out. One I thing that I'm doing here, since the day, the month, um, um, the, uh, the hour, minutes and seconds will come back as an integer and if it's less than 10, it will come back as a single digit and I want to keep everything shown as two digits. So whenever the day is less than 10, I'll add the zero, same goes for the month hour and minutes. So I'll get zero one instead of just one. So the screen will look always in the same length. It just looks better. And this is where I'm actually using the data. What I wrote here is that whenever the Unix time is more than five seconds since I started it, and to remind you the Unix time is the seconds since 
midnight of January 1st, 1970. And using that, the reason I'm using the Unix time is that I don't have to compare the, the, the month, the year, the day. I can just compare the Unix time because it's much easier. It's a one variable. And what I'm saying here is once uh, five seconds pass, meaning six seconds after the, the start, and if it's less than 10 seconds as the start, I want to print an asterisk in the seventh position. Remember, uh, things like that start with zero in the seventh, seventh position in the second line. So we're going to have an asterisk shown. And we could have done anything. We could have just uh, switched a LED, uh, uh, sound an alarm, or whatever we want. So let's upload this and see how it actually looks on the LCD screen. Okay, so I've uploaded the code and you can see in a second we're going to have an asterisk shown here. You can see the asterisk and now it disappeared. Excellent, it's working. And let's go through a few last things before we conclude this tutorial. One last thing I want to go over is uh, if you want to homebrew your uh, DS, uh, an RTC for yourself, this is a really nice link. I'm going to put it in the description and it gives you an, an excellent instruction. He's actually scavenging this out of, uh, out of uh, motherboard. He's getting the, the, oscill the oscillator and the, uh, the battery case. You can just buy them online. They, they, they're, they're cheap. And, it, and it's in full instructions of how to actually build it. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And enjoy!